what's the biggest challenge to engineer a part to fit on a motorcycle? Well, all you've got to do is look at a motorcycle and if you've got any experience in production. And, and us as Americans, we really don't have a lot of experience in uh, understanding production. A perfect example would be like a Bic lighter. Uh, we take that for granted. You know, it's a buck sixty-nine at the Seven Eleven, but there's probably in excess of around five to eight thousand dollars in tooling just to make that uh, Bic lighter. Right? You've got the plastic housing, which has a bottom cap. You've got that st that nickel-plated steel uh, guard. Well, there was a stamp tool for that. So, if you have an understanding or a familiarity with production then you really would you would look at making parts for motorcycles and be quite daunted because of you've got to factor in the OEM like BMW or Suzuki's manufacturing tolerances uh, then you've got to now engineer your parts to accept their tolerances it makes it quite difficult but we've come up with um, some very good strategies as well as some proprietary approaches that has allowed us to make parts that fit unbelievably well like I had mentioned the crash bars. Hey, here they are just slid on without their hardware and they're able to, uh, they stay exactly in place. So that's uh, pretty exciting. It's interesting that you ask that, you know, why such a high tech approach? And that really yielded out of starting fresh, right? We, I had no bias. I had no background on how, to, how I was going to do this. This is my first time um, doing production level parts. It's one thing to go to your garage or your fab shop and make a one-off piece. So when you start talking about production, you've got these tolerances that I've mentioned earlier, and you don't want your customers having to adjust for tolerances. You want them to be able to install. And so while, you, while some of our approaches are very high tech, um, quite sophisticated, it wasn't because this is the latest greatest, it was that's the right way to do it. We chose to hand TIG weld the crash bars because we did a study. We actually, that prototype had both uh, the, the MIG products provided and TIG products have provided. And it really comes down to a more of a finished decision. The MIG could be sufficient for the application, but truly that TIG, um, this is back to our finish of all Rider products. It just looks gorgeous. That stacked nickel look um, on that shot peen satin stainless steel is a really gorgeous look. I really saw the growth in this adventure touring market and nobody was really catering directly to the US and I had a mentor who was involved in manufacturing and the opportunity kind of was perhaps perfect timing, some you could argue worse timing to, to start this thing up but really think that we have an opportunity both because of the growth in this uh, market and then also the manufacturing capabilities in America particularly here in Washington, being in this Boeing corridor, having access to what I'm still shocked at is the just beautiful quality and able to hit price points that work for the market. The strategic relationships we have with our manufacturers goes much beyond just the product. It's really back at the beginning and utilizing some really talented individuals from the engineering department all the way down to uh, on the floor. The guys who are actually bending and doing the welding, hey, these guys have been doing it for 12 years. They've got some insight that the engineers or the guys up in the offices may not have. If we did that in Asia, we wouldn't have access to those guys. Even if we did make trips, there might be a massive communication issue there. Well, as we're able to do most of the manufacturing actually here in Washington State, it allows us to do on-site visits um, on a frequent basis to not only improve and evolve the product, but allows us to do have quick turn. We can get through a prototype and have production pieces sometimes within three to six weeks. So what's next for Alt-Rider? Well, we've got to get to market. March 1st, we launch, and we're really excited to see how the market responds. We've got a quite a busy production schedule this year that includes a lot of new products. So not only will you be seeing that on the website, the magazines will be getting a, a, a lot of press releases as these new products roll out. And I think though, really, I think we just need to make sure we're doing the right things before we get on to bigger projects. We certainly will be doing them, but right now we just need to make sure we're doing the right things.